let's talk a little bit about what makes up a wave. Um, this may be review for a lot of you, but let's get, all get on the same page. It's kind of important, right? So if I have a wave, right, that looks like this, right, and then it'll obviously continue on more that way and continue on more that way. But I want to focus on just this part of it. That's one full wavelength, okay? And there's kind of, you can see that it, there's a central point to the wave. Okay, this, this kind of central equilibrium line. Now, the highest points on a wave, right here, are, it's just called the crest. Okay, makes sense. And the lowest part on a wave here is called the trough. Maybe you guys have heard that um, some farm animals eat out of a trough, right? It's basically like kind of like a bowl thing, just like the bottom of a wave is like a bowl thing. Okay, um, nodes are these points here where the wave is right on the equilibrium position, right? This little equilibrium line. Um, so waves also have a wavelength. They have a certain length, right? And so from here all the way to here, there's a certain length, and that length is called lambda, the Greek letter lambda. So lambda equals wavelength. And I love it. I think it's a really cool little symbol. To me, it kind of looks like a like a kind of kind of a sad old slumpy old dude. Um, if you just take away the head, you have a lambda. Makes sense. Um, there's also something called the amplitude. Okay, and the amplitude is the height of the wave as measured from the equilibrium position. And one misconception is that. People think the amplitude is from the crest all the way to the trough. No, it is just from the equilibrium position to the top. And so we have here the amplitude. Now the amplitude um, is, the amplitude squared is proportional to the amount of energy that the wave has. So you can almost think of this is like a camel's hump holding the water and the amplitude of a wave holds the energy. Okay, so like for example with a sound wave, if you have a very, very low amplitude wave, then, you know, it's a very, very quiet sound. You can barely, barely hear it, right? But if you have a large amplitude wave, then that's a very, very loud sound, okay? So the bigger or smaller the amplitude, um, the more or less energy is locked inside the wave. Lastly, we have frequency. And the frequency is how many waves pass a certain point per second, right? You could think of this as cycles per second or waves per second. Um, and so it's basically the rate at which the wave jiggles, okay? And it's measured in hertz. So I'm gonna say frequency here. Is the number of waves that pass per second and that's going to be a hertz. Okay? And frequency is very, uh, very intimately connected with period, which is how long it takes one full wave to pass. It's actually a time. So the period is the time it takes for one full wave to pass, and that's measured in simply seconds. And the symbol is T. Okay? Now, you can, you can see here that frequency is the number of waves per second, and the period is the number of seconds per wave. So that means period and frequency are simply the inverses of each other, all right? Period given by T is just equal to one over F, the frequency, and frequency is equal to one over the period. Okay, so you can always find frequency if you have the period, and you can always find the period of a wave if you have frequency, okay? Now, in a nutshell, this is all the stuff that waves are made of, right? And it's all the various properties of a wave. Um, in the next slide, in the next video, we're going to be talking about how, at what rate, at what speed do these waves actually move about and how we can calculate that speed. And uh, I'll see you there.